we were quite open about how we actually do our auditing and how it might be a little different sometimes or where we from where we first started when it was first launched to where we are today. So I'll highlight a little bit of that now. So that's where I come from, 280 bed hospital, part of the Ramsey Group, so we own majority of private hospitals in Australia and sometimes I wish one of those beds that I think I live in it was in France, in one of our ones in Paris, but Australia is pretty good. So we're a pretty busy facility where we are. So if I think about where I started, it's a terrible photo, isn't it? Um, why, why am I passionate about infection prevention and control? Where did it all start and why is hand hygiene so important? My mother from a very young age used to say, you must wash your hands, don't share food and drink or you'll get worms. So I've had that, that vision in my head all my life. So I think visuals are really important as we'll talk about as I um, highlight some of the things that we do with our program. Um, probably not that one so much that's uh, pretty gruesome. So I also think that uh, in, my, in my own mind that there's, uh, I've decided that there's an infection control or a hand hygiene gene. Some have it, some have to learn it or we have to tweak it and uh, that's what I talk about when I'm training my auditors, it, don't make assumptions about people's natural ability or natural knowledge around infection prevention and hand hygiene and that you might have to have some innovative ways in how you can influence them or spark that, uh, that gene maybe, bring it alive. Uh, I think that, I was just looking, thinking about Lindsay's uh, presentation, maybe my date is wrong, was it launched in 2009 or 2010? Nine, yes, I've got that, that date wrong. But from that date, um, that was a pretty significant um, day, I think, when we went to that, that launch. <coughs> One of the things I did take away from that, though, is that I was very concerned about the patient advocate role. And I think I had to sort of park that concept for a while. Uh, and there were questions on the day about that. It wasn't just me that, that felt like that, watching someone go ahead and do the wrong thing, like not wash their hands. Um, but I did go back thinking, how am I going to sell this? And apart from adopting Lindsay or putting him in my pocket and taking him back to talk to the powers at B, I think I even spoke to him about it at the time, uh, that did actually come forth as time went on because um, the best thing that did happen, and I do put this hand hygiene program right up there. If I think about the things I've done over the last 30 years and the things that have had the most impact, Probably this program is right up there. Probably HIV was the first big one. Um, and, and the SARS outbreak would be another one. But I think it's been a really important uh, impetus for getting infection control on the map. But then also making it a, a mandatory part of the standards. And I think um, it's no good having programs and great ideas if we don't have probably that big stick that you're talking about, Lindsay. So um, from our first uh, submission, uh, where we actually started, we were a bit unusual. We actually had alcohol-based hand rub from the minute we opened our hospital in 1995. So we're a little bit um, on the, on the uh, forefront there. But we didn't have it in every, every, every bed at that time. And I know that was a big challenge for a lot of hospitals. Um, but the, when I looked at that, I thought, OK, practical issues. We've got to look at how we get it on every bed and also working with the uh, trade on this and working on how we can get um, uh, brackets that will actually fit on beds that can get into lifts and all of those things. So we actually train people absolutely purist to the hand hygiene methodology at that time and that's how we worked. I was getting more and more disappointed as time went on because I was hearing about how people were comparing data and um, could it really be compared and how we were performing and how we were going to bring our doctors on board. We also now have, Ramsey puts out a 95% benchmark for our facilities. And I have, being the opportunist that I, had, I am, I have actually had words with them about that. But we just decided we would rethink how we were actually doing it. So when we actually go into the wards, the way they're trained is to actually go in with an attitude that they're going to Yes, definitely inform them what they're doing uh, and then go through the five moments. Some of them will say, it's all right, it's all right, I'm okay, I know exactly how to do it. Uh, and actually give them feedback also on their actual technique as well so that we were focusing on the actual technique as well. It is a lot more time consuming, but we believe we're actually getting to where we need to be, which is better outcomes for our patients. 
So we've got 18 hand hygiene auditors, six uh, GSAs. We have a bank of iPads that live in my <laughs> office in a charging station. Uh, having said that, some people still use paper. Our Wi-Fi is not terrific, and that's really disappointing because we've got the facilities if they can, you know, just use them. Uh, and we're trying to improve that. Our um, hand hygiene orders are given quotas, uh, and I give them those out, and I try and rotate them at the beginning of every audit period. And that is actually driven by their manager, but they can't actually audit in their own areas at all. Then there's progress reports, or nagging, shall we say, uh, as the time goes on. Do they leave it to the last minute? Yes, often they do. That's, that's reality. Uh, but it is not negotiable. They must be done. Probably the most important thing is, is also getting it to things like the um, patient care review committee, and that gets it to the absolute top level. That's our top clinical, um, has the most robust, uh, probably, um, review of our practices and our safety around <coughs> infection prevention and control. So we've got doctors sitting there asking about it and not wanting to see their figures being really low and, uh, and really taking a, an engaged approach to it. So the, one of the most important things I would have to say is when they come back with that iPad or they bring back that audit sheet that I actually, we talk about it, we talk about what the feedback was, what issues they had, if they didn't have time to actually address something in particular, what I can do to take that to another committee or back to that department. So that we don't, it's never a punitive approach ever and it's always around education and improvement and that's, that's our focus well and truly. So we train them initially in high performing areas. So the areas that are pretty much, um, I'd have to say they're virtually 100% and that would be our oncology unit and our special care. It's, it, it's a really good thing to do because they're really busy units and if they can do it, everybody can do it, is what we sell. So that's, that also helps them when they actually go to the departments that could say, I haven't got time, haven't got time. Well, I've come from somewhere really busy that, um, yes, you can actually do it and give them a little bit of scripting is the other thing. And I think the dialogue, if there's nothing more important, I think you'd have to actually use this as your tool, is how they actually approach. The choice has already been highlighted, the type of auditors you have. Probably some of the people that are a bit more long in the tooth like me that don't mind actually having a conversation. I always say with the best possible smile you can have on your face, you can actually convert the world if you actually say it in the right way. And actually key words at key times is something that we use. So if it's a doctor's round, we suggest uh, a question. Are you going to use the alcohol-based hand rub or are you going to wash your hands at the basin? There's not a third option. Okay, and if you smile, the penny drops and we usually get somewhere with that. So as I said before, you go into the area, say that you're actually auditing, would you like me to go through it? And sometimes that it gives an opportunity also to, for someone to say, I've had problems with my skin, I might need to have a look at this, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And, and actually be approachable is really important. And healthy competition is the other thing. I'm sure you all find this when we do our promotional drive such as our, we have World Hand Hygiene Week uh, rather than just World Hand Hygiene Day and they're very competitive, the department. So if you can actually get them um, doing some competition type work, it, it actually has the most impact. So what has been the most important thing for our program? Uh, I actually think being visible, having those those auditors out there and visible in every department. We audit every single department every time. I think the longevity of the program has actually had a huge impact, the fact that it's not going away and they know that it's mandatory. It's reported at the highest level. It is a key performance indicator for our hospitals, comes via clinical governance and whilst their, their drive may be coming from uh, the fact that Things like health funds, there's a number of bodies that demand that information from private facilities, otherwise you don't get funding. We're just using that really, that tool to provide the impetus to get what we really want, which is people washing their hands. So that, that's actually working in a, possibly not the way it was intended originally, but it's working. 
So the selection and training and the attitude of the auditors, you've got to keep monitoring, and that's what I, I do all the time. And I'm looking at what their compliance is. If it's low, it means they're probably not doing the upfront education. So apart from our mandatory e-learning every year, I think probably the most important education is that one-on-one. -on -one. Our compliance with particular groups, and I think the uh, picture will speak, but I don't have to say who it is, uh, has actually improved out of sight. Even to the point where they're, because they see someone with an iPad, they might go across and in a joking manner go and say, look, see how perfect I am at doing this. So what? They've actually washed their hands. It works. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a number of things that we do to actually promote it, apart from doing the education. We actually also have, you know, do things that are, are visual so that they can actually see what's, what's happening with the program, uh, getting them to think about their own hands apart from the five moments is another thing. And I've got a, a slide shortly on how we've years, as years have gone on with our World Hand Hygiene Week, we've had things like where they can plate their hands on the way into the cafeteria and they come back and see what's grown on it a couple of days later. So getting the visuals, that, that really works. Um, the other thing we do is winter hand care um, program as well. And we also intertwine the hand hygiene into our infection prevention and control week. Um, and this year it was around uh, sepsis as well and uh, ANTT gets drawn into that, that whole model too. Patient engagement is an important part and we provide hand hygiene to them and try and get them involved in the program as well. And so that they, and I think that's a safety thing. They actually see it as a good thing that they were in their auditing. Uh, ensuring that they have confidence is, um, is incredibly important and I can't stress that one enough. And provo promoting that um, patient advocate role uh, in terms of not standing by and watching someone do the wrong thing. Uh, I do actually lecture at the um, College for International Nurses coming in, and one of the things that I am, am finding a lot is that some uh, staff come from cultures where they're not used to speaking up, and I think that's another challenge for us that we need to keep on reminding ourselves that the patient advocate role is what we're hanging on to here, and it's okay to speak up even if that person is higher up in the hierarchy, if you like. That's just one of those lovely displays of the bugs growing for them. Um, there's other opportunities. I try and speak it to the, any of the doctors' forums that I can possibly go to, spreading the word. I spoke at a GP's um, conference yesterday. Uh, I also try and encourage them to actually put things up about the five moments up in their, their um, doctors' rooms, etc. And I think that's... Um, a good idea. I actually had a, a student the other day doing some rounds, second year student, and they suddenly had a vasovagal and slid down the wall. I could see them going down the glass outside my window. So I brought them in to look after them, take their obs and that, but then we also had a good conversation about hand hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> I am an opportunist, but they were absolutely perfectly versed in the five moments. So that's a really fantastic thing. So I think the, finally the um, challenges that we have always, we're juggling everything. Uh, I think do no harm is probably where it all started. Um, consumer pressure, obviously people are looking to uh, shop around who has what in their hospitals and I think infection prevention should be something that is measured but whether we can measure it perfectly just on hand hygiene, I, I think there's more to it. The key performance indicators works definitely. It, it is absolute, an absolute driver. Um, getting everyone on board, I think, is, 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 a, is a big challenge, but it has to be your focus. There are technical fixes out there, I know, with the te um, the, some of the like, buzzers that go if you don't perform hand hygiene on the way in and way out, but I think it's a combination of things that you need, and I actually think that you still cannot get away from the visibility, that person that's up there and having those conversations and doing that, that education and hopefully we all end up with the best uh, outcomes for our patients because I think that is the gold standard, isn't it? We just don't want to transmit infection or, or do any harm. Um, and probably my wish for the future is that we do have a star system. I've been banging on with this slide forever, but hopefully eventually we'll have not just hand hygiene but all of the other things that relate around infection prevention to um, drive our, our excellent outcomes for our patients. And I did have a one for questions, but we won't have questions. <laughs> Thank you.